Hey. Hey, David. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, actually the first podcast type of format I've done with anyone. So uh, it's going to be a little bit different because I've never done, you know, talking to another person. So I want to see how it is interacting with someone else and getting feedback and ideas. Uh, so yeah, basically, let's begin. And uh, this podcast is basically for guys who are trying to improve themselves, guys who are maybe struggling in life and want to just, yeah, live a much more joyful life. And I think David, uh, he has a really good story and he's gone through a lot and he's improved himself. So I think he can share a lot of the things and maybe he can uh, like inspire someone or, you know, make someone realize something. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> first, I guess I didn't write down questions because I feel like questions <laughs> are really rigid. Uh, I kind of wrote down points. So like the first thing, like obviously I would want you to introduce yourself and like kind of tell me what your background is compared to now. Sure. Um, well, thanks for having me on, Camille. And um, one of the things, I guess, I guess my life has changed within the last two years. I mean, we're talking about personal freedom here mm. and, um, and uh, about life improvement. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, I'm 31 years old and during my 20s, I was pretty much an involuntary celibate uh-huh and what so, does that mean because uh, a lot of people want to understand that an involuntary celibate means that you want to have sex but you didn't have any oh okay okay so that uh, was that was something that you really wanted as a 20 year old well you i think I was, I was very very horny like most 20 year olds right. <laughs> no but that that's true though because as I look back onto my life, you know, and into my 20s, I see that, like, throughout my 20s, like, that's where I've been the horniest and I have the most sexual energy. And obviously, as men, we need to release it. But continue with your point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, in my late teens, you know, I was, I was kind of like my dating life if you want to call it that wasn't actually that bad you know it was a lot easier to meet people at school um you know I went I went to a private boys school so naturally the um the girls that went to the private girls school nearby were kind of affiliated loosely affiliated and you kind of got it was quite easy um but when I went to uni I found it harder and harder to meet new friends and uh, especially after university it was harder to meet not just new friends but new women for relationships like I did a bit of salsa which was another way of meeting mm. women and the women were a... pardon when was that like what the year in your life oh that would have been 2010 so actually I had a long-term relationship throughout the first year of my university Mm -hmm. um and uh she was in she was in like uh co college or what we call college i'm in england so um we have college and then university yeah and it she was in the year below me um and mm -hmm. uh you know i took i took the relationship very very seriously and i was devastated when it was over right um so i thought how do i meet girls now yeah, uh, I know. I'll do salsa. Yeah, so uh, so as I listen to you talk, like I hear that your main focus was on on women, you know, but it wasn't on uh, personal development. So you're when you were young, I guess all you were seeing is like, okay, I just want to get girls, and that was like the purpose of life. Was it like that? For. <sighs> I think it, I wouldn't say it was the most part. It was a big part. I mean, you know, I, I did go to uni, so I was focused on my career. Yeah. Um, but certainly it was a very important part of my life. 
uh, I did try and do because when I broke up with my relationship, I I actually did go through a pretty bad depression. Okay. Um, so I was trying to, you know, find out the meaning of life, if you want, yeah. to, if you want to call it that. I wanted to know how to um, kind of uh, get over the depression. And at the time, and I still am, uh, I was very analytical. I used to analyze every single thought in my head because I yeah, used to think, I'm the same I think that if I could out think my thoughts or my educate myself or analyze my thoughts then I could overcome this depression huh. and, uh, and, and, what, I, and what, what were you were you always like that were you always so analytical or did it come about the def, def, definitely because when I was 10 I right. pretty much had my first computer which didn't even have windows windows on it only had dos on it uh -huh. um, so I I was you know I had to use problem solving skills in order to get it working and uh, that that's exactly what I do for my job I have to problem solve yeah. and analyze problems to see what the solution is so it was a very natural flow from that thought process mm -hmm. I see yeah yeah because I like I'm the same way and I'm always thinking about everything too much I guess uh, even when it comes to like personal development and doing things right and just mm. making sure that I set myself up for the future. But uh, I feel like that's a good thing, though, because it shows that you're curious about things and you want to, like, dissect yeah. things, right? It's both good and bad because about meditation. Meditation is about observing your thoughts and mm -hmm. the opposite of meditation is actively thinking. So it taught yeah. it. So I had to learn meditation in order to calm myself down and not get um, to uh, kind of carried away with it. I found what I found in, uh, maybe a few years later was that my depression when I was younger was fueled not by, not by, well, it was, it was primarily fueled by my thoughts. And the more mm -hmm. I analyzed, thoughts it's like fighting fire with fire and it's like Eckhart Tolle who who is a great author which um some people might not know he um he basically advocates that that um you should observe your thoughts not not think so much yeah, yeah not and, to get attached to them yeah. exactly and um that that's when my depression started fading oh okay okay so it's once you detach yourself from your thinking that's when you kind of calm down a little bit huh? yeah when i stopped analyzing when i stopped analyzing my thoughts that's when i found that even though that i was upset and unhappy i could still be like okay this this will pass if i just observe it yeah so uh i guess Back to your depression, like when did the, your depression start? Because I'm curious about that. Um, it was 2007. It was a mix of things. And now you're 30. How much? 30. 31. 31. Okay, so you were 2007. That would have been when I was about 18. 17, 18. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. Huh. That's uh. It's about the time that my depression started i think my uh, started around 16 and it was because uh i realized like um that i didn't really want to be around my family and i i was taking a lot of drugs and alcohol and i guess that kind of affected me and when i was 17 or 18 uh, it kind of all you know came rushing in like the realization yeah. that i'm literally fucking up everything and then that sort of made me depressed and I saw like the effects of that translating into like uh, my outer world because I saw like I couldn't socialize with people, I couldn't go to the store, I couldn't like sit and focus on things, and uh, yeah, it was really a bad time. And how was it for you when you were in your depression? Uh, it was pretty pretty bad. Um, 
I basically stopped caring. I stopped eating for a bit. And uh, a lot of people were very worried for me. Um, but um, I, it's it's not been perfect since then. You know, I was, I was, I was again depressed in 2017 when, yeah. when uh, you know, I'd been single for a long time. Mm-hmm. And um, I put on a lot of weight. That was another thing, actually, that, that kind of fueled it. I wasn't as active as I am now. And that's definitely made a big impact on my depression. Like, I, I'm, carrying, I'm carrying less body fat around now, so it's a lot yes. easier to move. And uh, I, think, I think one of the biggest things I have right now is health and fitness and diet. Um, yeah. Which really helped as well. Yeah, yeah. and I, I want to talk about that, like the health and fitness and stuff like that. But I, I still want to kind of get to the, the the fundamental reason why you be, became depressed, because I'm sure there is a lot of like guys now, you know, in their 18s and 19s or 20s who are really fucking depressed, and they like they don't realize why it's happening. So uh, I think I think maybe this is a bit controversial, but I think like sometimes there is no reason why and this is the this is almost kind of like the analytical part of us which kind of try to work out you know why are we depressed um sometimes sometimes there may be a reason but other times there may not be a reason at all or at least not a reason we understand perhaps it's even chemical so what i would say it doesn't matter why you're depressed it's how you deal with it and um sometimes if you can't work out why then just do everything you can or even nothing sometimes that's nothing yeah um to get out of it i mean if if we knew why we all got depressed then we'd all have a cure for it and no one would be depressed anymore you know yeah, and maybe that antidepressants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean that that I did take I did t- have a few antidepressants yeah. and that, that did help short term. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I could give you a better answer, but I think I think we we don't we're not doctors and yeah. you know and, and yeah. uh, it's it's hard. But I I would say I'd say fitness definitely helps. I mean that that's a good way of burning the excess energy stored within yourself, uh-huh. um, and it's it's underestimated a bit I think as well. It, it takes part, yeah. it, it takes it takes the edge off off it, um, in my opinion. Mhm mhm that's true. Yeah. So let me uh, go into my notes because <laughs> I have a lot of notes and I. Like, I have a lot of things that we could talk about, but uh, again, I kind of want to go from like your story of how how you went from from that guy who was feeling really shitty to like you now, because like I know you now. I don't really know you back then. Yeah, but I know so you're I, so I... much fucking happier, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been around you. You have really good energy. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. So I I tried to give you a background of where I came from. So now I'll give you and your listeners and viewers. Um, I have three uh, listeners. Kind <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, 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 a kind of what's what's changed. So basically, in 2018, um, I was still quite depressed. I mean, it, it, I had my ups and downs, but this is quite a big down. Um, and um, one of the um, one of the things that kind of depressed me at the time, um, or at least thought depressed me, and I think I think it was, I had some validity to it, was the fact that I didn't have a relationship, that I didn't ah. have a girl, that I didn't have a girlfriend, and I wanted to do something about it. And I tried online dating, um, but I found that quite difficult. Um, Primarily because I didn't have any good photos, and also I was overweight, um, I and it was kind of it was kind of like a, a double whammy, if you like. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking to myself, this can't continue. Mm-hmm. I have to change, I, I have to change this. So I I basically looked up to try and go to a, a 
a pickup company, if you like, if you want to call it that. It's a company yeah. that teaches men how to talk to women in real life. Right. And, and there are a couple of companies I was um, investigated. I investigated Sasha Day game. Uh, and I've also, and, and in the end, I decided to go with the natural lifestyles. Right. And that was in May 2019. And it was a very fun week, you know? Uh -huh. um, it, it improved my confidence a heck of a lot. Um, it basically taught me that it didn't matter what you thought of yourself. You could still talk to and meet new women and new people. Yeah. Okay. So basically, so you figured out that maybe you're unhappy because you don't have a woman in your life and you, you had a relationship and you basically, it ended badly. And I guess you kind of had this uh, feeling of like, I still want to date people. Right. And so you, yeah. you went, you went for that route of like, I want to meet girls and then you went to dating apps it didn't work because obviously you had other issues and that affected that and then you tried the pickup company and um, I guess you know what made you decide to, to take like a course uh, with a pickup company sure um, I'd say desperation and and kind of loneliness. I would say the reason, I mean, I knew about this pickup industry for since I was 18. Yeah. Um, I knew about it because um, an acquaintance of mine uh, got me to read this book called The Game. And it's about, it's about this journalist who um, was struggling with women, investigated a subculture of men where they try and meet women and seduce women in real life. Yeah. Uh, they, they, not all of them have good ethics. Like men, there's no, some men are good, some men are bad. Same with pickup companies. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I knew about it and I thought to myself, I've, I either save up keep working and get myself a mortgage and be lonely yeah or i spend a bit of money on this course uh -huh. and, and i might have a girlfriend and i'll, pro I'll possibly be happier yes yeah, so, so did that insight come from the book or was it something that you just realized on your own what that i needed to do it yeah that you needed to, to like invest into into yourself and into a course like that because i read the book it's by yeah. Neil Strauss, right? Yes. Yeah, and it's it has like the the red pill mindset, and also it exactly. teaches you practical stuff that you could perhaps, do. Perhaps you want to explain what the red pill is, because not everyone knows what red pill is. Well, uh, I don't really know exactly what it is, but I know it's like an alternative way of thinking, because you have the normal way of thinking where it's like, I get a wife, I. I get married, I make some kids, I get a house, I get a dog, I get a car, yeah. and then just basically live your life like that and have a nice job and a secure safe uh, paycheck. And then the other way is realizing that, you know, a lot of women, they basically, uh, they date guys who are on the top, right? Like hypergamy. Maybe, yeah. I think, I think, I mean, my, my opinion about red pill is it's, it's slightly controversial. And, um, you know, there, there, there may be two schools of thought here. Uh, mm -hmm. But with, with red pill, I think, in my opinion, it, it can be a bit of, uh, it can be full of bitter men um, who kind of see women as second class citizens, in my opinion. Right. Um, okay. and, and it's kind of like, you, you know, it's it's they treat women as objects rather than people, in my opinion. And it's and they they try and talk about how to seduce them and maybe even conquer them if you like. And uh huh, uh huh, yeah. But I you, think yeah. I, yeah, you can you can see see people who get into like all the theories of red pill, you know, and they read too much stuff, but they don't actually yeah. go out and do stuff, and it yeah. just makes them really resentful towards women because they. It, 
like they realize that yeah okay women have this strategy where they date like the top guys so if you're not the top guy you're probably not going to get the hottest woman you're going to get a woman that sees you as a provider but mm. uh you know the way i see it is you, you need to go out and you need to interact with the world instead of reading all these theories because these yeah. theories they're going to change the way you think about people that uh, yeah, so you got to experiment for yourself. And I think that's what you did, right? Because you read the book and you were like, okay, yeah. you have to actually do something. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, the pickup company taught me a few things, um, natural lifestyle, sorry, I should say. Um, yeah. And then, and then, you know, taught me how to initially talk to women. Uh-huh. Um, uh, but, um, so have, have, I, you, have you, like, this, before the workshop, have you never approached on your own uh i tried but i didn't have very good experiences i basically Uh um i just used to chicken out and i used to feel even worse about myself because i'm thinking oh my god why can't i do this you know i it it, i just felt worse so i had to i had to to have someone to push me into the pool from yeah and um i'm grateful i did it um Mm. it didn't it didn't last for long one of the things it doesn't teach you about which i think is really important is about self-esteem and and um and self-confidence self-assurance and just being okay with yourself as you are um without other people because uh what i found out after doing it a few times is that i think it's not that it's not it's not that the loneliness that you feel is sometimes justified um but if you have um if you're lonely about relationships and things like that sometimes it's about your insecurities about not having a relationship you know mm-hmm. about you think you think about what other people have and, and what other people think of you because you don't have a girlfriend or something you know that okay. adds, that that's like another layer on top of the loneliness i think i see i see so it's kind of like uh you're kind of envious or jealous about maybe what other people have and you don't and it's kind of you know what, what's happening with social media nowadays because if you have instagram or facebook and you see your friends posting cool pictures of them doing cool stuff or them driving cool cars you know you you get mm. that jealousy and i Maybe it's the same way uh, when it comes to relationship. You see people with girls and you're like, you know, why don't I have that? But, yeah. Um, but that, for me, honestly, I think what it is is like, yeah, you get lonely when you're alone. But I, I feel you, you have to kind of adapt to that and learn to deal with your own feelings. Because yeah. if, if you just fucking, you know, if you meet a girl and you get attached to her, then you're basically depending on her to like yeah. feed you good emotions so that way you feel good about yourself and that's what we do as kids you know we attach to our parents to make us feel good so it's like mm-hmm. repeating that and it's yeah. yeah it's not healthy because you're not learning to to be okay with what's happening with you you know mm. does it make sense yeah that totally does dude you look so good david <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so, okay, so now basically you did the workshop and you learned some uh, day game skills, right? So you were able to approach women. And what happened after that? So actually what happened was, because I did that in Budapest and I live in a, in a little village near London. Yeah. Uh, so going on that was almost like a big adventure, a big holiday. And then I had to somehow bring that back home. Mm. and London is a very different place you know it's not quite as open as Budapest so when I I took it to London and I didn't have bad experiences there but I found it very different and very hard to bring with me home and I had excuses in my head about why this wouldn't work and I was just a bit more paranoid at the time um, because I wasn't the curious tourist I was the I, I don't know the the, the residents of this of the country it's a bit different and yeah. i i found it very difficult to bring with me bring with me back from budapest and i still had 
even though I did this, this really good fun thing about meeting women, I still had this underlying self-esteem issues, slight depression, although not as bad anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was generally fit, not feeling great. And I had a lot more weight at the time. Right. You know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm 10 kilograms lighter than I was when I took the course now. Yeah. So, um, you know. Yeah, I, it, yeah, I remember I met you on the on the course because I was working for for uh, Shay, and uh, he told me to go coach you one day, right? And we were hanging out, and <laughs> I kind of pushed you into doing sets. And I remember you weren't really like, like you didn't seem so excited. I mean, so ha- um, like. I guess secure in in who you are. You were, sure. I, I, what I saw was you were kind of doing it because you you had to, and you kind of yeah. had that excitement of being in a new city. But I I still felt like there was some insecurity inside you. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think one of the things you need to do is to fix yourself first before you go for relationships because it it just makes everything so much smoother. And it's and it's so much nicer to feel better about yourself, you know. You know, it's nice to be yourself. True. There's so many, so many other reasons for doing it. You don't have to do it just for women. You do it for yourself. And uh-huh. So um, yeah. So like, okay. So after you took the course, you kind of realized that because you you did a, some approaches, right? When you went back to London, or no? Yeah, I did. I did a few, and uh, but not that much. But I actually did another course that year with uh, Hayley Quinn, who's an affiliate of um, James Marshall from The Natural Lifestyles. And uh, actually that was a lot, I wouldn't say it was better, although it was a lot cheaper. Um, kind of like, it did, it, it, for me, it, I think also had the experience before, it built into the experience that I had. And the fact that I was doing it in my home city meant that when I learnt it, I could take it with me because I was doing it anywhere. Right. And they did. They did. They did teach you that you know, you're not. You're not like. You're not doing it for the actual set, which mm-hmm. I really wanted at the time. You're not do. You're not approaching with the actual set. You're doing it for the the feeling that it gives you Aww. and this is, this is what one of the coaches called ashley talked about so i kind of i kind of realized in that that actually i didn't need a woman to make myself feel happy it, it was something else inside me that that should make me feel happy yeah um, yeah okay okay yeah but uh, like for me i i see it in a way like so, so we go to these workshops and yeah we start approaching women and maybe we implement it into our own lives but what we're doing is yeah we're maybe we're not doing it for the women but we're doing it because we want to get that feeling right we want to get that that dopamine rush and every time you approach a girl you get a little that's true yes yeah i think i think that's true um i also i also think it depends why you're doing it as well right that's important yeah and and you know certainly when i when i did some approaching if you like although we call it socializing when i when i did some approaching with you what i found your philosophy which i really liked was that you do it to be social Mm -hmm. and you do it for the connection you know you can have all the sex in the world but it's no good without the connection and I exactly. think that's yeah. what makes it fun. And, it, it you know, it, it, it helps you because you use humour, and all uh-huh. these different skills, which you don't have to just use in a, in a flirtation environment. You can, you can use it for just being jolly and happy with people yeah. that anyone can make. Yeah, yeah, that's true, man. And that, that's what it comes down to, is, like, being able to be social in, in your life everywhere you go and uh, like yeah. anytime if you're at the grocery store 
if you're at the shopping center, maybe if you're at some event and just being able to socialize with people naturally and not seeing it as some sort of goal or you, you're trying to get something from another person. It's just like you're giving energy and they're giving energy mm -hmm. back and it's a social exchange, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a very meditative process, isn't it? Being in the now, oh, yeah. enjoying the moment uh not enjoying the journey and not doing it just for the goal um and i think i think that's really really important i think it's a skill set within itself yeah uh, because it, yeah it, it it makes you better as well you're better you're better at the job yeah. of what, of what you want. I, ironically it's like if you're in the now and if you're not one if you're not too focused on the end goal you're more likely to achieve what it is you set out for as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, because yeah, you're, you're in the now and you're appreciating the moment or the process of, of being social instead of the, the outcome. Because the outcome will never make you happy because once you achieve it, like, yeah, maybe you get a little boost, but you still need another outcome and you just keep on doing that. And I, I see like day gamers that I, I used to hang out with and I hang out with now is what they do is they go out on the streets and they just like walk around for two hours and they're just like like all the, their whole goal is to get laid and you can see that within their interactions when they're talking to someone they don't mm. really care about the other person they're, they just care about how fast will it will they get to their goal but they're not enjoying the process you know and and i think this is the most important thing is to enjoy the, the whole process of it because that's where where the, the joy is yeah but okay let me just uh, continue this because you know uh from the time that i met you to now it's not been such a long time and i see that no. you, real, you realize this like so quickly you know so how you realize it so fast because for me it took a long time <laughs> So I'd say it was my circumstances, actually, um, because it was the whole coronavirus. Um, mm -hmm. Not the fact that I caught it. I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, basically, um, what I learned is that you have to have something else than this. You know, this mm -hmm. can be one of your hobbies. This is one of the things you can do. But if it's the only thing you have going in your life, you're not you're not going to be happy. And it's and it's so cool, so cliche, but I believe it's true. Mm -hmm. um, what happened was in when the lockdown started in this country, um, that limited everyone going outside, so no one was meeting each other anymore. And I was really worried that I was going to put on weight. Uh, my my friend, who was a personal trainer, started doing remote sessions with him uh, because he he didn't have as many clients because people were no longer meeting up with him. And basically, my fit I I focused on my fitness for about ten weeks, and I lost I lost ten kilograms I think in ten weeks. That was great. Um, and um, you know I felt so much better. My fitness was better. I felt better about myself. I had less weight to carry around. Um, and I was generally enjoying life more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's very common. It's not the only thing that, that, that um, goes with you. But when, when you're fitter, when you have more energy... Because I have more energy, because I trained more and I have less weight, um, you naturally become better at conversations. Your performance in increases in every part of your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had something else other than sex and meeting women that gave me endorphin. Right. You know, so that yeah. made me less less dependent and less desperate for having a shag or having us having sex you know yeah so like basically exercising was your sex <laughs> yeah i have to say it is it was and is still at the moment i mean last year i couldn't i couldn't um last year i couldn't um 
I couldn't do any, you know, I could do an hour a week of exercise and I'd struggle. Yeah. Now, now I'm doing it six times a week. And yesterday, wow, was first time I did a ten kilometer run. Yeah, and you, would, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have seen me do that uh, mm-hmm. last year. I, I wouldn't even imagine last year I could do this this year. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that, yeah, you're saying that the, yeah, it's about developing yourself and just becoming better. Um, within your own life and doing things that imp- improve you. Because, um, I mean, back to the day game thing, you know, I remember, so we met two years ago, and then we yeah. met about, when was it? So, months, September. Months, September. Yeah, yeah, you came to Krakow, and we were hanging out with another guy also, and we went out at night, and it was so, like, so different seeing you the way that you were. In September, because you were just happy, you know, and you were giving up good energy. Yeah. And I saw that you felt so good about yourself. Uh, even like that time when we walked into the bar and there was like two girls sitting, and you were you, you just like <laughs> sat down by them and started talking. And like for yeah. me, you know, that's hard to do. Um, but like, yeah, I feel like if you get. Um, what do you call it? Like, if you get your habits right, and if you focus on yourself a little bit, and you develop yourself, then you're going to be able to to express that joy that you have within, you know, without yeah. using any, like, techniques or something like that. It's going to be natural. Exactly. Yeah, I think you have to be happy first. I mean, everyone wants to be happy, right? Yeah. But for some reason, men, I think we've been taught or programmed, whatever you want to call it, that sex is the most important thing in the world Mm -hmm. and it's the only thing one of these few things that's going to make us happy or feel good and be that whether that's because of marketing or or whether that's because of what we you know the bro culture if you like or the lag culture um I, i think i think you know we are taught to be insecure unless we have a girlfriend unless our life is perfect and it's all it's all bullshit in my opinion. You, you need to you need to be independent of what other people tell you is true. You need to have your own lo- you need to have your own not just your own life, but your own mindset. You need to be independent of what other people tell you is true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and from that position, I think things are just gonna naturally be attracted to you right or they're gonna come to you yeah i mean obviously obviously like it's not if it's not literal literally that way because you know like i still will probably have to talk to women and women won't necessarily talk to me first you know mm-hmm. it, it won't it won't it won't be just oh i just sit back now and everything happens yeah. i can i can get yeah. that again you know if no, i don't no, do yeah, it. Yeah. So you, yeah. so, you, so you still have your responsibilities and and kind of like mm-hmm. you know the things that you have to do, but it it becomes easier, more fun, and mm-hmm. when, when you're happy, things are more fun. And but even work, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I have good days, sometimes I have bad days. You know, I've I've quite a good job. You know, it's 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 not a bad job at all. Uh, but sometimes there are days where I, I really don't want to do this, but because I because I'm quite happy with the way things are, because I do training, do exercise, and I eat well, um, and on an occasion I do meditation, uh, mm-hmm. it, it makes it makes the the least bearable things in your life to- more tolerable. Oh yeah, okay. And if you have more perseverance, like things like women, for example, like you know, I used to hate meeting women. That's what. That's probably why I didn't. You know, didn't do it that well when you know you first met me but now because I now because I have a higher tolerance for things that I don't like it it's now easier maybe I don't know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah that makes sense man that makes sense because if I look at, at my own life you know whenever I did something hard it made made a, like things in my life easier the things that should be difficult so for example you know I started doing yoga and yoga is really difficult because you have to hold the stretches for a really long time 
But after you go through that, you know, like the rest of your day, you have some momentum and like the difficult things become easier because you overcome some resistance like within yourself. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done yoga myself, so I know yoga is lovely. It's like um, I went to this, I, I used to do it at this uh, lady's house and she had a mansion, right? Uh-huh. And she, she oh, used wow. to, yeah, she had a, her own yoga studio. And um, every time I went there, it was almost like come, like being coming back from being on holiday. You know, that's how it used to make me feel. So I know I know what you mean about yoga making you feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's with like training too, because you're lifting weights and it's, yeah. you know there's obviously a lot of resistance and you have to push yourself. You can't just be like, oh, I can't do it. And once you push past that resistance. It gives you kind of a boost of confidence about everything else because you know. Yeah, that you I mean, that. yeah, I mean, like obviously, you don't want to overdo it. You know, you do you do it depending on what level you are, and it's 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 about you know doing doing just enough to make you out of breath and exert yourself, but not too much where you injure yourself. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's about you know about milestones and achievements and you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of gives you a satisfaction in life because you see that you're actually evolving and pushing yourself and growing every time you, you go and do that workout. And especially for you because you do the runs, you know, and you started out with maybe just a little, but now you're doing like 10 kilometers, so that's a lot, right? Yeah, um, okay, so that's good. So let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> All right, because uh, we've been going for like 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so a question that I really want to ask you is, why did you do all of this? You know, why did you get into self-development and fitness and health? What is um, the behind it? Uh, because I wanted to be happier. I think, uh-huh. I think, um, I used to think, I used to think like, you know, I could always improve myself and it was, it's, it's fun. I mean, that's the biggest yeah. reason, I, you know, and you see the progress, you, see that you, you can measure, you can measure your process, your progress as well. And, um, you know, I used to really enjoy it and I still do. And I think, you know, I think I think everyone can improve themselves. It's good to improve yourself. You're happier, you improve yourself. Your performance goes up. Um, I mean, I used to watch Star Trek when I was younger, right? And it's always talking about, oh, you should better yourself. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better I human being. Yeah. yeah, you probably don't want to start, but never mind. Um, but still, it, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing. But I think, I think, um, I think it was just like a hobby. Like some people painted Warhammer, mm-hmm. and I, I used to do self development. You know, I was, I was just a ah. bit odd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess each person has a different thing that they're after, right? Yeah, yeah. and each person has a. A different thing that makes them happy so I guess yeah. for you it's like fitness and self-development for me it's the same you know for me it's like being curious about life taking yeah. on challenges and just mm-hmm. trying to expand my knowledge by uh, learning from other people and yeah having cool experiences and living like alternative lifestyles mm. um, but yeah I mean now you're doing good right so you, you got a good routine you have a job yeah you do you have a woman though? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm on a bit of a hiatus at the moment, but I don't necessarily feel bad about that because, like I said earlier, I'm fairly happy within myself. I'm doing exercise. I'm doing really well with that. So, and also, um, also, yeah, yeah. And and I think, like, I I will find it easier to get someone in the future. And... The yeah. fact I will I will be doing you know I will be meeting a woman for connection. I mean, obviously, like I love having sex. Everyone does, but like 
I think I think you know the primary reason of me meeting someone would be to form a connection to see whether we have something in common, and that won't be me desiring happiness from some someone else. It will be me giving something to someone else, you know. Mm -hmm. So I won't feel like I'm sucking the energy from someone else. So it yeah. won't make me feel happy. I'm sure I feel good inside about myself but like i said like like you said as well about being social um is that the um is is that i it's not the only thing that i have going for me in my life it's not the only thing that's going to make me feel happy you mm -hmm. know um yeah. you know i need, i i am living in the countryside so it does live so it does make beating at least younger women uh, very difficult. But I'm moving moving to Cardiff mm -hmm. um, next next year, so hopefully that will improve things. Yeah, Six yeah. And uh, do you do you use any dating apps now, or you you off of that? Uh, I haven't yet. Well, the thing is, like, I find dating apps a bit frustrating because it's about it's almost like you talking into the abyss. <laughs> I need to get I need to get um, better photos, I'm sure, and maybe write a profile. And I'm sure I'd do better than I did last year because I've I've lost a lot of weight. I'm probably going to have better pictures. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I don't find dating apps fun. You know? Yeah, I guess yeah, it's a preference for me. Like I'm doing it because uh, because of COVID, and like nowadays you can't really approach people or talk to people so it's just another to meet people and you know you never know you might meet someone uh, who's like into what you're into and maybe you, you will create something together so I see it as a way yeah. to, to connect with people but you're right about like you have to set it up in a way where it's serving you because a lot of people what they do with dating apps is they put really shitty pictures and they expect results and then it's like a fucking void you know, because nothing happens, but there has to be a lot of thinking that goes into uh, dating profiles. So, you know, I don't see it as a bad thing, but I see it as a, as a tool, especially nowadays. Um, and then uh, I wanted to ask you something else. Okay, so the thing that I want to ask you is like, yeah, so it's, we're living in this, this, um, these difficult times right because of covid and there's lockdowns yeah. and people are wearing masks so you, you can't really be social and i guess that's causing a lot of mental health issues because people are not going out as much people can't go to a gym so like what advice would you give someone who's like dealing with mental health issues because i know that you've dealt it with yourself and you're kind of doing good now some some bits or pieces that you could give from your life um my biggest advice i mean when you it depends how um how severe they are mm -hmm. um and it also depends on the nature of the virus i mean everyone even if someone has the same diagnosed condition it will manifest itself in different ways i guess the only way i can really talk about this is from experience yeah um, my advice is don't go through it alone. You know, talk to friends, talk to family if you can. Um, and, and you know, you, you, one of the things that there are, the, the biggest positive, it, which is also a really big negative, but it's a huge positive, is that when you go through something like mental health, you really find out who your friends are. Because because um, some some people won't really want to get involved in it or try to distance themselves, but the ones who are really your friends will stick by you. Um, you. You know, I think I think. Yeah, but um, for example, like what what could a person do today just to like feel a little bit better about himself or? get out of that that rut that he's stuck in because of the of the times that we're living in 
Oh, I see. I see. Um, well, I think I think um, you know we're allowed, to, uh, or at least in my country, you're allowed to do exercise once a day. So even if you just, even if you're just stuck inside on your own, um, do, do, go outside, have a walk, or have a run. Yeah, that's right. Get get your body moving. Uh, if if you're living on your own. Uh, make sure you visit someone or, or 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 regularly contact your friends so you don't feel lonely um and yeah it's that there is there isn't a golden advice that i can give out i'm afraid for this yeah, kind of thing. all good but yeah i mean you're right though going outside that's like the number one thing is just getting some fresh air making sure that you move your body because as a mm. dude I don't know how it is for girls, but as a dude, we have a lot of sexual energy and you don't want that sexual energy to go into like watching pornography or into bad habits. So you want to yeah. make sure that you're moving your body and then, uh, yeah, make sure you're doing that at least like twice a day. Go for like a 10, 20 minute walk so you get out of the house and then call your friends because like, yeah. I talk to David like at least once a week or something and I have other friends that I call and it's good because we encourage each other and like we see how things are going we yeah we, uh, yeah we inspire each other by doing this so it's a very nice thing i mean call your family make sure you're connecting with them and then uh, another thing i would add is probably do some exercise so it might be difficult because it's like i can't go to the gym how can i exercise but mm -hmm. you don't need equipment to exercise you can just do some push-ups every day you can do some curl ups. You can do what you used to do in high school. Running. During gym. Yeah. Running. running. That's amazing yeah. too. So just start little by little and then eventually it's, you know, you'll gain some momentum and you'll get to David's level. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you want to start out, there's, there's something called Tabata training, which is eight minutes, but it's, it's a very concise and very efficient. Way of training so if you haven't got the enough time look up to batter training to batter training well, i'm gonna say that so bat is it uh, like a body weight workout yes to bat uh, training all right save it let's go all right so uh we're coming to an end here david yeah <laughs> Hold on, let me see what else I got in my notes. Um, day in money fitness, lifestyle development. All right, and the last thing I think I, I want to get into because now it's very prevalent that a lot of people sit at home and they're using social media and they're on their devices and they're yeah. watching pornography because you know they're not talking to people. Uh, so, what do you think about? like these things and you, can you give some advice to like not get involved in social media porn and you know? well i think i think all the whole thing is all about addiction isn't it like social media is addictive um pornography is addictive and i think i think i think you know if you're stuck inside you have to find i mean the trouble is we're inside right so yeah. We we're trying to not get bored, and that's 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 why we do addictive things because we're bored and we want something to do. So mm -hmm. I think I think I think we need to just use everything in moderation. But you need to find addictive habits that aren't that aren't like kind of destructive. And unfortunately, I think I think I think we will be doing addictive things like watching tv watching youtube browsing our phone um but i think i think as long as long as you don't do it excessively i think it's pretty harmless okay. i think cool all right uh, good advice all right and then the, the last things that i want to ask you is uh some of recommendations that you may have so like a top book that you read in the past few years that you think would be useful oh god that was that's a hard one yeah 
I haven't read for quite a while. <laughs> or or audio book, you know, maybe like something about meditation, exercise. I don't know. Do you have any? Um. Oh God. <laughs> oh, it's the hard. I think I think um I think I there's a book that I don't recommend which is Facebook. Okay. Don't read that book. <laughs> okay. And then uh, another one is uh maybe someone who who you watch on YouTube or listen to like a speaker or a life coach or fitness coach, health coach. Do you have anyone? Um, I'm a big fan of Eckhart Tolle. Um, he's a he's a bit of a person who you either love or hate. Um, a lot of stuff he talks about is the same, but it's the essence of him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of important. It's about non-resistance and acceptance of no matter how bad your life is, you have to accept it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think you don't have to read books all the time. I think I think as long as you keep yourself busy, yeah. and uh, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, think. I disagree with that. So I think that you know people should read books because uh, it's like someone's fucking whole life experience, you know, inside a book or an audio book, and you're just mm. taking all of that in. So. You, it helps you avoid a lot of mistakes because, for example, I'm reading a book about money and I have big issues with money. And after reading like a few books about money, it definitely helped me realize some some like mindsets and things that I was doing wrong. So, mm. but yeah, I mean, you can watch videos, but I think the most important thing is going out and implementing the stuff you learn, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like you can't. You you cannot surf by reading a book about surfing. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like fitness, yeah, you can read a little bit about fitness, but in the end, you're going to have to go do it. You know, mm. the reading is not going to make your muscles big. Exactly. Uh, okay, so I guess that's all I got. You know, uh, this is a really good conversation, actually. Yeah, I thanks. I don't know if you want to ask me any questions or because do you have any question? Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I, I should have prepared my notes. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, no, I think I think you've done a terrific okay. job. Thanks, Camille. You're inspiring. I love I love the fact that you you do what you want to do and you're not afraid to do it. And um, yeah. You know, you're a very free and social individual. You're very kind as well. And I think Thanks, you've got man. a lot of qualities that's good in an individual. Um, so I think, I think just keep what you're doing. Keep up with what you're doing, man. It's good Thank work. You. Would, you, uh, would you date me if I was a girl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You are funny. <laughs> maybe, maybe when I grow up my hair. I'll let, I'll let your listeners and viewers uh, decide that one. Huh? I'll let your listeners and viewers oh, okay. decide that. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I guess uh, then we'll end it right here. It was a really good chat with you, man. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking me through your story because I think it's yeah, important for people you. to see okay, where yeah. you came from and how you're doing now. You know, mm -hmm. and you probably got to go to work or something. But yeah, thanks for your time, man. And hopefully, everyone watching, you know, appreciate this conversation and take it in and maybe you'll get something out of it and uh yeah message me or message david if you have any questions i don't know if you want to uh like share your blog what's the name yeah 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 it's a very it's a very new blog it's called the better man hub dot com and it's a website it's designed it's a very new website um it's in progress so be kind and it's 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 basically a website um, for men, although women can look at it too. And it's about how we can better ourselves as men. And it focuses on fitness, dating, diet, and it's not limited to those things. But it's a it's a general self improvement website about how we can improve ourselves. And um, I'd love you to read 
uh, the, the blog, I'd love you to add your comments as well. And my email address is david at thebettermanhub.com. And yeah, it's, it's, it was great being on your channel, Camille. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's cool, man. Thank you. Uh, and then, yeah, basically, we'll end it here. And then uh, I guess we'll maybe talk next week or something. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, brother. Thank you for coming on. Love you. Yes, thank you. See ya. Bye.